Finally, uh, I want to talk about implementing third-party widgets and controls. Do you remember earlier how I said it's very easy to, to just go online, look for a, a third-party control, and implement it? So what we're going to demonstrate is if, if we just go online and we open up Google and we just do JS color, you know. I'm sorry, you see how slow the internet is here. So we're going to just implement this little widget here. So you so you see this widget, and the first thing you want to do is just always click on whatever sort of bindings they have here, right? So we're going to. So there's no. Uh, so there's going to be no witchcraft here. You just go to index. You see just JS color test, just like we had before. And we need to create a new file called jscolor.php. So we're, so we're going to create a JS color object. So you just very quickly clash JS color will extend. They have it. If we look over here, it's an input, right? So what's the closest thing to an input that no one has? It has a text box. So we're going to say text box <coughs> uh, clash JS color extends text box. We're going to write the constructor like. We've written uh, many times earlier. JS color. And we're just going to uh, do parent text box and nothing else. We don't take in a left top with the high right now. And we're going to add. So we see there is JS color. We can see JS color.js. You can see that this is just a normal uh, JavaScript file here. And we're just going to, there is a class in local client script that offers unparalleled support for third party JavaScript. Uh, in terms of including files, dealing with race conditions, there's just so much power there that unfortunately we won't be able to cover here. So here we're just going to do add source, uh, JS color, and what was it? JS color.js. Okay. And then we're just literally going to take. That line that they have here, but note how they don't have a semicolon. They should have a semicolon. Okay. So what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to call the client script Q function. What Q does is an actual Q uh, JavaScript, either a JavaScript code snippet or a JavaScript function to execute when an object is added and shown. So you, you, you don't have any of the issues with, oh, you're going to execute JavaScript on your object that you want to manipulate, hasn't displayed, hasn't shown. So nothing unnecessary, you see? So even though, so you, 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 you can see very quickly how uh, Nolo allows all the functionality that's inherent within our stuff for your own things in, in terms of the lightweight on-demand aspect. Nothing is on the client that is necessary. So, so, we're, so we're just going to go here. And we copy that snippet here, and we just paste that in. We're going to add a semicolon. Let's change this to a double quote so we can use <coughs> magic here. So instead of my fill, we're just going to do this, right? <coughs> and instead of document get element by ID, and we're just going to use the uh, Anolo shortcut. But you don't need to. You could use document get element by ID. So it it literally could be this, okay? That was unfortunate with the undo. So underscore this here. So again, that's literally the same line, just with the replace document document element by D with underscore n. We changed their arbitrary my field one to just this, and we added a semicolon. Okay, and I'm adding a semicolon here, so that's it. And we now go to our test here. We're just gonna do this. Controls dot add new JS color. Note that we don't have to do require or include. Nolo will automatically include the file as it's being used if it's in the same directory. If, however, it's in another folder, you can use the Nolo system include paths to just include that directory for instantiation when you use those objects. So we just say new JS color. Okay. <clears throat> and we're just going to go here to what was that? It was other. It was just other there, and we now have a working, a working JS color. Note that it works fine. So now let's make this a little bit more interesting. We're just gonna add a button. So add uh, this controls add 
new button. I'm sorry, new button. Getting tired. <clears throat> Clicky. And just get a left of 200. And we're just going to say that when I click, so we're, let's call this color box here. <clears throat> so click equals new server event. This change color. And we'll pass in the color box. Or rather, let's call it JS color. So it's just better in terms of semantics here. <clears throat> JS color. Change color again. Function. Change color. Uh, JS color. You again, you can close anything you want to object, whatever. And we're going to say, I, I'm going to use the CSS shortcut, but you could use back color. I, I just want to show a variety. So this CSS background equals, we're just going to do add the hash dot object arrow text. Okay. So when I click on the button, it should change the color of clicky. I can pick a color. Clicky, you see. So how very quickly I implemented a third party control and it just works. So I can add, I can, I can make JS color take in a left and top over here and left and top and over and over here I can do say zero. Note the autocomplete as soon as I actually have the class. Note how it'll just do that. So I was gonna make this top 100, and just so you can see, and I I should probably make this JS color two, so it's the, still the first one. So note that I now have two, and just very very quickly here you you just see now that this will still work with the with the first one, but you just see very quickly here how I implemented third party object. There was no mystery here. It was literally just wrap. I just add the source and then I can just queue which is so nice because it, it, it actually makes it easier for you to add dynamic objects so you don't have to worry about race conditions or or anything like that so if I didn't add it so if I didn't add the control there'd be no JavaScript sent to the client and there would be no source added so JS color <coughs> is also important add source will only add one so even if I were to call add source a thousand times it'll never send more than one JS color to the client Similarly, if I were to never add and show this object, the JS color would never have been added to the client. And then you just see that I just literally did Q with code that they just had that I copy and pasted. And notice how I didn't have to uh, do anything in terms of keeping track of the text or doing anything to sync. This will just work. You see how it just works, right? So that, that's your model. No, it just works, okay?